This is Elliot Haspel and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about best practices for teaching measurement conceptually. And this comes from an article on teaching children mathematics. And the authors of the article talk about three specific kind of lessons, the tasks that would work to really help students think about what is measurement, how do you measure something, why do you measure something, why can't you measure something in certain kinds of ways. But they're not the only type of tasks that do this. So at the end, we're going to talk about the overall questions that well-designed measurement tasks should help students answer. And so the first of these is called the button task. And the idea here is that you're giving students pictures of fake students' work in measuring a sheet of paper with buttons. So you literally give students sheets of paper that had pictures like these on them. And the hypothetical students should have done a couple of things wrong. So in one case, they should have had spaced out the buttons they were using. And so, you know, these big gaps in between each button. In another one here, they measured it diagonally with buttons, trying to find the length. Obviously, that's not going to work. Here, another example, they used the buttons to do a kind of a snake pattern with them. And then in one example, they uh, correctly did use buttons to measure just across to measure the length. And while my drawings aren't fantastic, uh, in this case, imagine that all the buttons are drawn of equal size. The reason the button task is so strong is because it forces students to really reckon with questions of why measuring works or doesn't work. Uh, teachers should really encourage students to defend their answers here. Which is the best way to measure that sheet of paper and why? And that forces students to say that the correct answer works because you're measuring the right attribute, you're measuring the length. Uh, you can't actually measure with spaces. Spaces don't work. You can't measure diagonally because it doesn't tell you what you want to know. Things like that, you're really helping students to wrestle with very deep questions, a very high-level critical thinking questions of why measurement works the way it does. The second task is called the foot task. And this is when you have students do make a cutout of a tracing of their own foot. And that's the only tool they have to measure with for the purpose of this lesson. And so, with their foot cut out, you have them measure various things in the classroom. Measure their desks, measure uh, certain pieces of the floor, things like that. And by limiting them to one uh, sort of tool of measurement, you're again really making them think about what does it mean to measure something when you don't have a full length of it. So, and especially, let's say that there aren't any lines. Let's say they're not measuring, they're measuring the desk, and the desk doesn't have a lot of nice lines in it, like the floor tiles might. What do you do with that? How do you actually measure in that situation, and why, what are the challenges? Things like that. And the third task is called the one-inch squares task, and this is very much focused around the issue of how do you use a ruler, which, as I think many elementary school teachers know, can be a surprisingly frustrating and difficult thing for students to understand. And what this means is that the teacher starts in the front of the classroom by measuring an object, just an everyday object, with a ruler. Then the teacher models measuring the same object with a set of one-inch squares. And of course, all a ruler is, is really a set of one inches put right next to each other, so you're going to come up with the same exact measurement, and then pose the question to the students, why does that work? Why is it that when I have the ruler and when I have used these one inch squares, I come up with the exact same measurement? And then ask students in pairs to start measuring the sets of classroom objects, both with the rulers and with sets of one inch squares. By doing this, you're really helping students see that the ruler is not some magical object that happens to measure things. All it is, is a consecutive set of one inches put together, and that's what you're doing when you're measuring with a ruler, is you're seeing how many of those one inch squares the length of something takes up. And so these are three, again, examples of different kinds of really deep conceptual tasks. But in general, when you're designing measurement tasks, these are the questions students should have to think about. Do units need to have equal length? Do the gaps between units when you're measuring them matter or not? What quantity is being measured? Are you measuring the length? And when you say you're measuring the length, which length? We're saying you're measuring the width, like which width of, because those words can sometimes have confusing double meanings. And how does a ruler represent length? How does a ruler work? 
When you have tasks that are forcing students to reckon with one or more of these questions at a time, you're really pushing them past just doing the rote task of measuring, and you're going to really push them into understanding why measurement works the way it does, which is going to help them in all sorts of measurement tasks now and in the future. So, uh, again, if you want to see more detailed descriptions of these tasks, I encourage you to download the entire, the full article right up. Uh, thanks for watching, and happy teaching!